Hey guys. All right, so um, we're just continuing on um, with our discussion of trigonometry, and, and the topic is called the ambiguous case. So this is really kind of part of the sign law questions over here. But um, um, and, and guys, it's the I don't want to try to just uh, scare you over here, but this is probably one of the more difficult concepts to wrap your head around in this unit over here. Okay. So it's, it's called the ambiguous case, like that. And so the word ambiguous means well, it means uncertain. Like that, right? So I'll show you what I mean by that. So suppose we have, um, so first of all, um, using special triangles to determine sine 30 and sine 150 degrees. Okay. So, so the idea with this is that if you guys remember the special triangles that we did in earlier on in this unit, if we have a triangle that looks like this 30, 60, it's 1, Two and root three. So this is a triangle that we that we gotta ask you guys to memorize for for this unit over here. So sine thirty equals one over two. Okay. Now sine one fifty is remember the way we did this. We have to go look at an x and y axis. So here's our initial arm, and then one fifty would come over here. So it's less than one eighty. So this is going to be an angle of one hundred and fifty degrees like this. Right, and that means we had a a thirty degrees in this guy over here. So, so the idea is that this is thirty, sixty, and here's ninety. That means this is one, two, and now this guy over here would be a negative root three because we're going to the left over here. Okay, but either way, sine of one fifty is going to still going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So sine one fifty equals one over two. So reason why I'm showing you this is. If I just look at my calculator here, so if I go sine 30, I get 0 0.5, which is 1 half. And if I go sine 150, I also get 0 0.5. Okay, so I get the same answer for both 30 degrees and 150. Okay, now, now the, the question is, the reason why I'm showing this to you is suppose I had a question that said this. Um, sine x equals 0 0.5. Well, how would you figure out x? Well, you go sine inverse of 0 0.5. If you put that into your calculator, you would get, so you go sine inverse of 0 0.5. Well, it's always going to be the, the, the acute angle 30, okay? But hopefully what you see over here is like, well, the angle might have been 30, but also might have been 150. So I guess, I guess the question is like, how do you know which one is going to be, okay? So surely, guys, it works the same thing for any what we call um, supplementary angles. So, so supplementary angles are angles that add to make 180, right? So, for example, 60 and 120 are supplementary. It's driving me nuts. My slide keeps moving up like this. But so if I go sine 60 and sine 120, it's going to give me the exact same thing. Okay, so, so all you guys do that in your calculators, but it's going to be the exact same same thing. Okay, so sine 60 and sine 120 both equal root 3 over 2. All right, okay, so guys, we're going to come back to this in a second here. And why does it keep doing this? Okay, so example two, draw the triangle, and I'm putting in brackets S because I'm implying that there might be more than one triangle you could do, where angle A equals 30, little A equals 6, and B equals 10. So here's going to be one triangle, right, where this is given all this information to be true. So if I go like this, I'm going to say that this is my side A, and this is my big B. That means this is 30 degrees. And that means this little a is six centimeters and little b is going to be 10 centimeters. Okay, so this is one possibility that I could um I could do this guy. Okay. So as well, now when I was saying there's two possible triangles, here's another way I could draw it. I could go like this. Where this is a and this is b. So this is 30 degrees and this is six where this is 10 centimeters over here. So the ambiguous case is like when we give you information like this, well, 
I mean, is a triangle going to look like this guy or is it going to look like this guy over here? Hence why it's called the ambiguous case, because given this information, you could have two different triangles. Now, really where it comes to different is, I call this my angle C over here, and this is my angle C. Well, in this case, like my angle A is 30 degrees in both, but angles B and C are clearly going to be different in these guys over here. Okay. Example three. Similar idea over here. Now, now the, the idea over here, if I have 30 degrees, and here is big B, that means little b is 10 centimeters, and little a is 16 centimeters. All right, so the idea over here, guys, is in this case, um, there's only going to be one triangle possible for this guy. Okay, And, and the reason being, if you see how this side over here, 16 is bigger than 10 over here. Well, in the previous example, this number was smaller than this number here. Okay, so in the, in, in the previous one, we had we had six centimeters here, which was smaller than 10. And when, when six was smaller than 10, it's like this side was able to kind of swivel back this way and draw this triangle over here. Sometimes you'll see a triangle draw like this. You'll see, you'll see like a dotted line going back over here. So, so maybe, Sorry, it's a terrible dotted line there, guys. And of course, it's not working at all. Sorry. All right, sorry, guys, I can't erase this right now. Um, okay, so let me just try redrawing it. So if we draw a triangle like this, Triangle could be drawn like this, or I could draw this line down like this as well. So sometimes you see like it's showing, well, maybe it's this line, maybe it's this line, okay? But we're not quite sure, okay? But the idea is if this length is longer than this length, there's only one triangle. So in other words, for this triangle, this is not ambiguous. There's only one possible triangle for this guy over here. For this guy over here, I'm gonna say actually, there's no triangles possible for this one. Here's why. If I draw an angle of 30 degrees, and I'm telling you that this side, so here's my A, and this is B, and this is 10 centimeters here. Well, I'll show you why I have this question in a sec, but this line, which is the height of the triangle, is going to end up being 5. Okay, well, if it's 5 from here to here, and I'm telling you that the length from here to here is 4, I'm going to get a situation like this. Well, if this height is 5, and I'm trying to go from this point all the way down to this point, this line B over here, well, 4 is not long enough to stretch from this point to this point over here. So so, so in this case, we're going to have one where we actually have no triangles possible. Okay, Here are the conditions we need to figure out. Which one is like, how did I get this 5 over here? Okay, So if I have a triangle like this, and I draw a an altitude or a height, I'll call this guy H for height. It's H for height, it's not for hypotenuse, okay? So this is A, this is little a, this is B, this is little b over here. And C, little c, but we don't need the C for this question. Well, how to figure out this height? Well, this is a right triangle here. So I can go sine A equals H over B. If I multiply both sides by B, I get B sine A equals H, okay? So in this case, if I want like 10 sine 30, that's going to give me this answer of 5, which I got right here, okay? So if we ever tell you the triangle where, where this length here is smaller than this height over here, we actually have zero possible triangles we can draw. It's, it's not going to be a triangle, okay? Because like, this side cannot connect to this guy over here, okay? So guys, I hopefully that makes sense. Um, Take a look into the into the notes in the section in this section as well. Like that, they do a good job in the other notes, and then try the textbook practice. So we have one more case where I can solve a problem like this. In triangle ABC, angle A equals thirty, B equals forty-two, and um, determine the other sides and angles. Round your answer to the nearest unit. So we have thirty degrees. Okay, and I'm going to draw this guy over here. So this is going to be 24 centimeters. 
and here's my big B, and this is 42 centimeters. Okay, so first of all, what's the height going to be? Like we saw in the previous example, the height is equal to the sine A times B. So it's going to be 42 times sine 30, which is 21 centimeters. All right, so we know that this height is 21, is smaller than this height, so this triangle is possible because this, this 24 is bigger than, than this guy, which is 20. One. So 24 is bigger than 21, okay? But also 24 is smaller than 42. Or the other triangle we could draw would be this. Okay, so where this is my 24, this is 30, and this is 42 centimeters. All right, so I got these guys over here. Okay, so, so so these two guys are set up so far, okay? All right, so let's go back and determine the measures of the other sides and angles. So if I'm coming back to this one, um, this comes just to a, a Raker sine law question. I'm going to barbell it. I can go those guys over here. Or I'm going to go these guys like this. So there's my two barbells. Okay, so I get sine... 30 over 24. Guys, my computer is being really sluggish right now. Okay. Equals sine B over. 42. So I'm just going to multiply both sides by 42, like this. And I got 42 sine 30 divided by 24 is 0 0.875. That means sine inverse of 0.875 equals angle B. So the second sine of this answer. And I get 61 degrees. Sound good? All right, so there's 61 degrees. All right, so this is 61 degrees here. I'm going to go um, to figure out this angle here. Well, 30 plus 61 is 91. 180 minus 91 is 89. So this is going to be an 89 degree angle. So now, if I know this angle and I need to figure out this side, I'll call this guy X. I'm going to barbell these guys. Okay. So we have sine 89 over X equals sine 30 over 24. So I'm going to multiply both sides by X. Multiply both sides by 24 divided by sine 30, and we get 24 sine 89 over sine 30 equals x. All right, so when I do this, I get x equals to the nearest unit, so it's, it's going to be 47.99 dot dot dot. So that means x equals 48 centimeters. Sound good? All right, guys. Now, so, so this is the one triangle over here. I'm going to do, but now, since it's an ambiguous case, it could be this situation or it could be this situation over here as well. So I'm just going to do the second one on the second page here. So I'm going to do... Triangle that looks like this. So this is still 30. This is still 24. And this is still 42. Okay. So, so for this one, I'm going to figure out this angle now. Well, I'm going to do the same way. I'm going to do this guy here and this guy here. I'm going to circle these guys. I'm going to circle 
these guys here. Okay, so if I have sine 30 over 24 equals sine b over 42. Okay, now if it looks the same, guys, this is exactly the same calculation that we did in the last one. We got 0 0.875 equals sine b. And then if I go sine inverse of 0.875, we get 48 degrees. Now, if we remember like way back to example one over here, guys, we talked about supplementary angles. And the idea is like, this guy's 48 degrees, but the supplementary angle to 48 is 180 minus 48 is 130. Two degrees. So the point over here is like if you look at this angle over here, the way I drew this one, there's no way that this angle is 48 degrees. So how do I figure it out? Well, it's kind of the supplementary angle property that we talked about in example one. So if this is I've got an answer of 48, if I go 180 minus 48 and get 132, that means this angle here is 132. So 132 plus 30 is 162, and then if I go 132 plus 30 is 162. If I go 180 minus 162, I get 18 degrees here. Okay, so it's going to be 18 degrees. All right, now how do I figure out this side length over here? Well, I'm going to do barbells here. I now know this angle, and I can figure out this guy. So we have sine 30 over 24 equals sine, and guys, I made a mistake here. Yes, this is 18 degrees, but we what we should have done is like, this 48 degrees was actually at 47.9926 dot dot dot. So when I figure out this one over here, and I said it was, it was 132, I should be going 180 minus all the decimal places, which is 132.007 dot dot dot. The point is, guys, these decimals might matter. Okay, so the point is, guys, when we're doing this, guys, we want to make sure that we're using all of these decimals here, and that means this guy over here should be 18.007 dot 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 over here as well. I should be using all the decimal points that I can to figure out to figure out these guys. All right, so here we have um, sine of 18.007.3106 over x. That means if I multiply both sides by x, We get and we get x equals 15 centimeters here. So guys, um, I fully expect this to be a, a, a complex topic over here, guys. And this is kind of like a kind of a quick lesson over here. Um, please, guys, if you have any questions, guys, you know, send me an email, send me a message, and I'll, I'll do my best to get back to you about this. All right. Thanks, guys. Talk to you in the next video.